So in a previous video, we talked about like how to choose your tech stack. For, for building a website. For building a website. And we saw that there's like kind of two blocks. One is the framework that you will use. And the second is the CMS that you will use. So let's dig more a bit into that, like yeah. how to choose a CMS. Yeah, we already dig into the framework uh, yes. side. So what allowed us to dig, to dig into like frameworks is that we talked about the approach of CMS that doesn't constrain you from choosing the technology that you want, whatever it is, like uh, React, Node, um, uh, View, Ooh, Next, me. whatever yeah. it is. And that that is the, you know, what's called today sometimes like headless CMS. There are different things like or API based CMS. So the, the main thing about it is that it has an API that allows you to fetch content and then uh, display it on your components and on your, your templates, depending on the approach. Right, and that's the connection between. So you have the building, uh, sorry, the publishing tools, and then you have an API. And you fetch that, and you display it on your components and your um, templates. Uh, and so, so, as a developer, when I look at this, should I consider something related to this API? Like, for instance, if I want to use Gatsby, do I need the CMS to give me an API that works with GraphQL? Yeah, uh, for instance, Gatsby, they have this source play, uh, those source plugins that allow you to wrap any API into GraphQL. So you don't not need that, but I like GraphQL API because it it's, you know, it works very well for websites. You know, you have some kind of main document for the website mm -hmm. and you have some linked documents and you know, you can query everything together into one query and then you fetch that content and you have it already prepared for your components. So you don't have to do kind of uh, reorganize, restructure data. You have it ready for the way you want it. So GraphQL is a good uh, uh, choice, not only for, uh, I would say, not only for Gatsby, but for other approaches as well. It, the, uh, GraphQL works very well f with uh, components and we have videos, uh, we did videos about that. Right? Yeah, yeah. We link them maybe. Uh, but the other thing is that, well, if you have a, a REST API, well, it needs to be powerful. It's to uh, allow you to query different things, you know, different documents, get the link, link documents, link documents. together, uh, and so on and so on. So yeah, you need to consider that into uh, when you choose. When a, you choose. Yeah, there's this and there's also like, um, people considering should I choose an, a CMS? It's something also that they, they have a question for other tools, but like that's I would host myself or should I use a SaaS? Now I, I might look very biased here because you know, we do a SaaS, but maybe that's the reason why I started doing a SaaS because I, I would strongly think before hosting any any anything. Hosting is not only about the, the, the how much you pay for the machines, it's also about like availability, how many redundancy you need to get to do in the servers and scalability, uh, global uh, distribution. If you are like your clients are all around the world, you need to consider all of that. So if you get this, uh, if you can find a company that can host that for you, provide it as a service and you, they do the scaling well, they do uh, the, you know, upgrading to different uh, new versions well. Well, that that's very costly. That's very costly, and especially CMSs. They don't, you know, nowadays they don't have one data store or one database. They have so many of them. One database maybe for the <clears throat> the content itself. One database for, uh, you know, for images. One database for the search. So you have so many services, and hosting all of this is a lot of work. Not only for the price, but also for people that have to monitor these, and to uh, scale them, and uh, you know, to maintain them. So, but there's a video that we did with uh, Yotam from Yotam, yeah. You can we can link it as well about like the buy versus uh, build. build, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so, okay, we talked about everything that is let's say around the CMS uh, part of it, but still around. Um, let's dig more into the publishing tool, which is like the core features that will like be used right. by your marketers or your content team. Yeah, of course, the the core the core feature is an editor. You need an editor, right? By the end of the day, the CMS uh, gives you an editor so that people can write content in it, edit it, save it, publish it. Right? Yeah. But that's every. Uh, if, if if your CMS doesn't have that, that's the basic. It's not the <laughs> CMS, right? Um, but there's a very important idea that you need to keep your, in your head. Whenever you build your website, you're giving it back to to uh, content writers. You want to make them independent. You want to, to make their experience. A good experience because they are going to use it for one year, two years, three years, as long as that website uh, stays. 
And by doing that, also they will not come back to uh, to you each time they want to modify something or if each time something is not working. So it's time saved for you in the future once you right choose. exactly. So uh, think about making them independent. So I guess a good approach with that is having some kind of mechanism of components. So you have components in your framework and you want to have the same kind of components in your exactly CMS. in your CMS. So you kind of have uh, for different sections of a landing page. Uh, you can make a framework of components that allow them to uh, compose these and make their pages. Uh, and from your side, as a developer, you take these and you make um, you know you could make them correspond to components that you have in your code, so that everything works uh, works fine uh, whenever they're composing their pages. With, for instance, us, we have slices that they do they do exactly this, and and that makes them independent. They can generate new uni- unique new pages without getting back to you. Which will stay consistent with the like uh, global design. Yeah, it doesn't say. break the, the 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 brand design, for instance, that you worked on. That's that's a good thing about it. So that's another thing that you need to have, I guess, in the CMS you know, uh, uh, working with these technologies. And you have something else that like uh, I see is very useful is the fact that when you when you can preview your work instantly, it's something that like I think like content writers, people who are not developers, are used to when they use tools like uh, Wix and Squarespace, they edit, they write content and they see the results. And I, this could be or should be something very like necessary. Yeah, we should we should not break that experience. Um, I, I, I can't even understand how can you as a writer, as a content writer, and it's very hard to write content without seeing how it looks like in the website. You know, for me, the Workflow should be like, okay, I'm working on on my laptop on on some content, and I have a screen that shows me how it looks like in the website, uh, and and another like maybe my mobile is showing me how it looks like on on uh, on mobile, in real time. Uh, so I, I type things, I add things, and I things like and then I, uh, like appear, and I say okay, like the title is too long on mobile, they make me sh- shorter, or like the image is not uh, adapted to to the desktop, and on things like that. So you judge. In real time, about how your your uh, content that you're producing, content writing is also about designing content to mm. fit into the the medium that you're publishing to. So, live reviews is extremely important for this, I guess. And this is something we provide, but I I, I wouldn't advise, you know, you least, if you care about your content writers to to do without something like uh, you know real time pre- preview. Okay, yeah, that's cool. And so. Um... That's 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 really clear. But like, I'd like to understand like how the project will go once you chose your framework, you chose your CMS. How the yeah, we can we can do that in the, in the next video, so we can talk about um, you know how how you what the workflow with for building the website and collaboration. Cool. cool. That's fit.